Today, folks, the dividend stock portfolio is worth about $427,000 coming into the end of January of 2023. The market's proving resilient, and it reminds me of this Warren Buffett quote that the rising tide will raise all ships because even in this news cycle, the rhetoric being this recessionary environment, stocks are still able to rise, which reminds you to cost average consistently to take advantage of the unknowns. The annualized dividend income, I'm making about 3.16% on this portfolio or about $12,000. $307 annually. I've received just under $600 for the month of January, but I'm expecting that to increase dramatically because most of my ETFs and positions do pay quarterly dividends. But in this video, I want to focus on one stock so many of you have asked me questions about, and that is the Vanguard Canadian High Dividend Yield ETF. It is a monthly paying dividend stock. The ticker is VDY and almost makes me $7,000 in annual income. And in a performance standpoint, it has been in line with the S&P 500 as VDY is up 6.65% year to date against VOO that's up 6.68%. But so many of you pointed out, considering this is a monthly paying ETF, that the recent declared dividend was 0 0.02 cents, which if you go through the last decade history is by far one of the lowest payouts we've ever seen. But when we take a look at VDY, the actual 12 month trailing dividend yield is 4.42%, which has actually been going up over the last four or five months, which is really odd to see a stock price going up, a dividend yield going up, yet the payout going down. And if we go into my Scotia iTrade account, what's really confusing here, and I'm sure a lot of people experience this, is it calculates the annual dividend yield based off the last declared dividend. So it's claiming that off this 60,000 position dollar position one of the largest positions in an account that i hold in vdy i'm only getting over an annualized basis 0.65 percent in a dividend or the total annual yield being 388 dollars which is abysmal to say the least but this is why i always focus on my portfolio trackers because it takes the 12 month trailing or what is based off the vanguard website so i trust the, the annual dividend much more accurately from my my portfolio tracker which if you guys want to support the channel come on over to portfoliospreadsheet.com i'm going to be launching the excel version very soon you purchase one you get all of them for free but once the excel version launches the price is going to be going up on all the trackers here but you can use coupon code dividends to get 30 percent off so it's something you wanted to try i would suggest doing it now before we raise the prices but let me get into first and foremost i actually took the time to call vanguard because so many of you were concerned about this and considering vanguard manages hundreds of billions of dollars their phone service is reasonable i got a hold of a, a one of their employees literally within like five minutes and i asked them hey vdy a lot of my friends you know family community they're all asking about why the dividend is down so much and he did reassure me that hey i know it's a low payout for this month but considering how the payouts change you know, month over month, quarter over quarter, and most of the positioning in VDY pay quarterly, you know, you're going to expect that monthly payment to fluctuate. But he's like, I promise you, if it's that low this month, it's going to be way higher in the coming months. So there is no direct concern. It is kind of a red flag and something weird to see. And I'd always recommend that if you want more stabilized monthly income and you're relying on it to maybe pair VDY with some other monthly paying Canadian dividend stocks or some REITs. But let's talk about this and break down some of the largest holdings and when we can expect those dividends to get into VDY because we can see that that payment of two cents declared is an 84% decline, which is just, again, it looks really concerning, right? But let's start with Royal Bank, which year to date has been doing very well. It's been a very stabilized company, the largest stock in Canada at $186 billion market cap, nothing comparable to Apple. But when we take a look at the dividend payout, guys, it's got the declared dividend to be paid out on February 24th. So we're not gonna see that in the recently declared dividend from VDY. What about TD, the second largest company in Canada, which is a huge proponent of VDY? Well, we can see that this one is paying out uh, on 0131. So its dividend should just be paying out on the declaration date. So that's probably not gonna get included to the following month in VDY. But let's take a look at some of the other holdings for those of you that don't know VDY, the top five positions, damn will make up 50% of this entire ETF, Royal Bank at 14%, Toronto Dominion at 12.5%, Enbridge at 8%, Bank of Montreal at 66 Canadian Natural Resource at 6%, and BNS at 6%. And all of these are basically quarterly paying stocks. But let's take a look at Enbridge, the largest pipeline company in North America, the third largest positioning in VDY, which is going to have a dividend payout date on the third month of 2023. So we're not going to see that one come into play anytime soon. We got Bank of Montreal here. That one's going to be 
paying out on the uh, February 28th. So we can see like we're not going to see any dividends from the largest payers. So it's no surprise that we're seeing a decline. And again, if VDY, you know, Vanguard's repositioning some of those stocks, or again, the dates don't line up directly with the payout dates announced, I, there's no real reason to be concerned that the dividend has dropped off so much. There's Canadian Natural Resource. This one has been on an utter tear over the last five years. This one actually offering some special dividends over the last year is paying, uh, had a payout on 0105. So January 5th, some of you probably got a dividend from this one, which I'm not sure if we saw that in the January payment. Um, but if we didn't, it could be a part of the that two cents that we're getting for February. And then we have Bank of Nova Scotia here, which is uh, paid out on 0127. So that one should have actually been paying out today. And again, I'm not sure if that's going to be included in the February payment from VDY. If you guys want to learn more about the holdings, I really suggest you take your time and just learn the product that Vanguard offers with VDY because it holds literally my favorite Canadian dividend stocks and it is a place of continuity for me to be cost averaging without owning 10 or 20 of these because outside of the top 10 holdings, you know, you got everything from TELUS, these awesome uh, Canadian uh, telecom giants, you got financials and insurance like Manulife, restaurant brands, Power Corp of Canada. You've even got the worst performers in here like Algonquin Power and Utility, which just slashed its dividend by 40%, but barely would make a hiccup in the total holdings of this ETF. And again, I wouldn't have known how bad Algonquin Power was going to get hit. So I love that I can get exposure to it. But if the stock underperforms, it'll probably get reweighted in this ETF passively without me having to manage or pay attention to it. And I really appreciate all the comments, concerns, and questions because we all learn from you guys asking and pointing these things out. And on my last video, I broke down the 10 largest companies in Canada. You guys made a lot of cool comments. Uh, this one was really neat. He says, this is a very interesting video. As an American investor, I really enjoy learning about Canadian stocks and their economy. I would be interested in learning more about the companies 11 through 20, if possible. I currently invest in Fortis, Telus, Bell, Enbridge, TC Energy, Manulife, Canadian Natural Resources, Royal Bank, TD, Brookfield Infrastructure, and Brookfield Renewable. And definitely consider subscribing because I will break down that list from 11 till 20. You already hold the most resilient dividend stocks in Canada. And I always love Canada because I feel like we have a much more stabilized investment economy. For those of you looking to retire and collect cash flow, like you can't say the S&P 500 being mostly tech focused can really offer this kind of stabilized income. And in just some other news, for those of you that weren't paying attention, the Bank of Canada rose the interest rate again, but it's going to hit the pause. And I listened to some of the conversations around the interest rates and what they're doing is currently set 4.5% at the base rate. And they're claiming that it's going to continue to hit the real estate market. Market, but they're expecting it to nominalize in the second half of 2023 and they are expecting to actually pull back they made some hints about it that you know when the economy levels off and inflation finally you know really cools off which i think it already has that they will obviously start bringing that interest rate down so i think we're in an incredible environment not only for purchasing suppressed stock prices but if you're looking at getting real estate in the next three to six months probably a really good time to start looking for deals for people that can't afford the variable rates as most of their payments have gone up by well over a thousand a month but i'll pass the question off to you i'd love to know what you guys think about this in that comment section below